This is definitely not a sad story for the space industry. The ever controversial head of the Russian space program, Dmitry Rogozin, is being replaced by Deputy Prime Minister Yuri Borisov, according to an official statement from the Kremlin. The decree is effective immediately on July 15th, the same day the agency and NASA signed a long-anticipated agreement to exchange seats on flights to the International Space Station. The first missions, with a Russian on SpaceX's Crew Dragon and an American on Soyuz vehicles, will fly in September. How will all this happen? Well, let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech Channel. As a long-awaited historic event, NASA and its Russian counterpart, Roscosmos, have agreed to exchange seats on four upcoming missions to the ISS. The first, with Russians on SpaceX Crew Dragon and then an American on a Soyuz vehicle, will fly in September. Dragon is the only U.S. spacecraft currently flying capable of taking humans to the space station. Such integrated crews with Russian cosmonauts on Crew Dragon spacecraft and American astronauts on Soyuz spacecraft are essential to safe ISS operations, NASA explained in a statement. Flying integrated crews ensures there are appropriately trained crew members on board the station for essential maintenance and spacewalks. This also protects against contingencies such as a problem with any crew spacecraft, serious crew medical issues, or an emergency aboard the station that requires a crew and the vehicle they are assigned to to return to Earth sooner than planned. NASA spokesman Josh Finch said in a statement, the no exchange of funds arrangement includes transportation to and from the International Space Station and comprehensive mission support, including all necessary training and preparation for launch, flight operations, landing, and crew rescue services. NASA has confirmed that Roscosmos cosmonaut Anna Kikina will go to the ISS in September on the Crew-5 Crew Dragon spacecraft with NASA astronaut Frank Rubio launching later in the month on the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft. In addition, Roscosmos cosmonaut Andrei Fedeyev has been assigned to the Crew-6 mission launching in spring 2023, and NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara will fly on the Soyuz MS-23 around the same time. Integrated crews have been the norm throughout the International Space Station program and they're an important symbol of cooperation between Russia and the United States, despite geopolitical tension. Russian cosmonaut Sergei Kriklev was the first Russian to fly on a U.S. space vehicle, riding on NASA's space shuttle way back in 1994, and a year later, NASA astronaut Norman Thagard flew to the Mir space station on a Soyuz vehicle. Following the retirement of the space shuttle in 2011, NASA had to rely on Russia for crew transportation to the space station. Although Russia eventually charged NASA about $90 million for a seat, the country held up its end of the bargain by providing reliable transportation. NASA no longer needs Russia for this, however, with the SpaceX Crew Dragon coming online as an operational spacecraft. Kakina will become the first Russian to launch on a U.S. vehicle other than the space shuttle. Obviously, Elon Musk and the SpaceX team have contributed a great deal to get this important deal. Then, thanks for the leaving of Roscosmos director, General Dmitry Rogozin. I'm just kidding, but coincidentally, the announcement came on Friday morning, shortly after the Kremlin announced that Rogozin had been bounced from his position. Rogozin has been in charge of Roscosmos since his appointment as Director General in 2018, though prior to that he was Deputy Prime Minister in 2011 overseeing space and defense. He's been a controversial figure for most of the tenure, resulting in strained relations with NASA, Russia's largest partner in space. Rogozin was sanctioned by the United States in 2014 and barred from entering the country due to his time as Deputy Prime Minister during Russia's annexation of Crimea. As the head of Roscosmos, Rogozin became known for making wildly outlandish statements and threats, many of which put NASA in uncomfortable positions. His bombast got renewed focus when Russia began its invasion of Ukraine this year, prompting Rogozin to go into overdrive and make ludicrous claims that many interpreted as threats against NASA and the U.S.-Russian space partnership. For instance, at the start of the war, he seemed to hint that Roscosmos might pull out of the ISS partnership and cause the ISS to come crashing down to Earth. After declaring that Russia would no longer supply rocket engines to the U.S., Rogozin stated NASA astronauts could use broomsticks to get to orbit. 
Unfortunately, as you know, Rogozin has been completely extinguished many times by SpaceX CEO Elon Musk. But Rogozin has gone even further. The following is an abbreviated list of the controversies he's been enmeshed in with Western officials in just the last week. On July 7th, NASA took the extremely rare step of publicly criticizing Roscosmos after it used the ISS for propaganda purpose, supporting breakaway regions of Ukraine. Quote, NASA strongly rebukes Russia using the ISS for political purposes to support its war against Ukraine, end quote, from the space agency. The European and Canadian space agencies also joined the criticism. On July 11th, the Russian publication Aviation Explorer reported that Rogozin refused to take a call from NASA Administrator Bill Nelson in the wake of the ISS propaganda incident. Quote, there's nothing to talk about. Let the sanction be lifted first, Rogozin reportedly said. Then on July 12th, Rogozin mocks U.S. President Joe Biden on his Telegram channel after NASA revealed the first photograph from the James Webb Space Telescope at a ceremony at the White House. Rogozin said Biden needed a big magnifying glass and went to the bathroom for a long time. On July 12th, the European Space Agency said it's officially terminating work with Russia on the ExoMars probe to land on Mars. Rogozin responded with an angry message on his Telegram account calling ESA Chief Joseph Asbacher an irresponsible bureaucrat. And on July 12th as well, in a tit-for-tat move, Rogozin threatened to halt Russian cooperation on the use of a new European robotic arm on the space station. This arm was developed by ESA for a number of European countries and launched the Russian segment of the space station in July 2021. Rogozin's mouth makes headlines even before Russia's war in Ukraine, though, when the U.S. placed sanctions on Russia's industry during the Crimea invasion in 2014. Rogozin said the move would hurt Russia's space industry and that American astronauts who relied on Russia to get to space back then could use a trampoline to get to orbit instead. Additionally, when NASA introduced an international effort to standardize rules for exploring the moon, Rogozin scoffed at the initiative and likened NASA's lunar plans to an invasion similar to the Iraq War. Even with tension increasing between the U.S. and Russia on Earth, NASA and Roscosmos have maintained seamless operation on the ISS, which is currently home to three cosmonauts, three NASA astronauts, and an Italian astronaut with the European Space Agency and Russia is still working towards extending its partnership with NASA on the ISS, though a formal decision has not yet been made. Now NASA may be breathing a sigh of relief with the Rogozin news, but it's possible the recently ousted space chief could be getting a very different role soon. Medusa, an independent Russian news publication, reported on July 13th, the Kremlin is considering moving Rogozin into a position in the presidential administration or as a supervisor for two regions of the Ukraine occupied by Russian forces. What do you think about this man? Share with us in the comments section. And that will wrap it up for today's episode. And thanks, and we'll see you next time.